Good morning, Church. It's indeed with a great sense of joy that uh, Dr. Rabin Chako and me uh, came up to church today, and we're actually standing at the altar and the pulpit um, to bring you a little portion of this service right from church. We're recording it on a Saturday evening. Uh, probably we hope that at some point we'll also be able to live stream in the future right from the church uh, altar. Uh, this is in preparation to obviously meeting together and we hope that that will be soon uh, whenever God or, uh, ordains it, whenever we know that it's safe to do so. Uh, over the last few months, uh, God has connected us in various ways, virtually, a little physically when possible and it's been very different but we are really, really thankful to God that as a church we've been able to pray for each other, we've been able to support each other, we've been able to minister to each other's needs and connect in various ways, be it VBS or Sunday school or evening devotions or uh, church services. We're just really thankful that God has given us uh, uh, these wonderful ways to meet together. Uh, so over the next couple of weeks, we hope to check the church equipment and uh, the building uh, to see if everything is working. There's been uh, water, there's been rains, there's been floods, there's been squirrels and rats uh, around. And uh, we will assess how much damage uh, has been done. Thankfully, the church building has held up uh, quite well. We've not had any uh, break-ins as yet. Um, we, even with the storm that happened a couple of days ago, there's been only minimal water damage and a couple of the smaller plants have fallen in. And we know that uh, even though none of us physically came here other than Neelavain and Anand, uh, that it is God's powerful protection on this church building uh, that has, we have seen. And we hope that we will be able to prepare to meet here once again. And uh, when we come back, we will realize we are stronger, we are more passionate for God, we are more connected to each other, and we will be able to not only minister to each other's uh, needs, uh, but as a church, we will continue reaching out to people who don't know about God, who don't know Jesus as their personal saviors, that uh, we will be able to minister to their needs, reach out to people, and uh, this pandemic should not stop the, the wonderful ways in which we can spread the gospel uh, to everyone else. Uh, today's church service, we will have the Bible reading and we will have the sermon recorded from the pulpit. I just hope that uh, the familiar sight of this brick wall and the beautiful verse from Haggai 2.7 uh, brings you memories of church uh, and we hope that it will also instill in you uh, a sense to pray for the church, to continue praying for the church and uh, for safety. Uh, we know that the pandemic is uh, ongoing and uh, we pray that whenever we meet that we should be able to do so in a safe way and that uh, it should be in God's will. So before I go on to the Bible reading, shall we have a word of prayer especially for church, uh, both the meeting together and the building and the infrastructure. Uh, join with me as we pray together as a church. God our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time Lord. We thank you Lord that uh, over the past eight uh, months or so Lord, that your sense of protection has been on this building, Lord, has been on this church, Lord. We know, Lord, that we will have to do some repairs. We will need to fix a few things. We will need to renew a few things, Lord. But we are so happy to do that, Lord, because we know, Lord, that the time to meet together is coming soon, Lord. And you will tell us when it's safe, Lord, and you will tell us how to do it, Lord. We thank and praise you, especially for Neil Avain and Anand, Lord, who's been working tirelessly over the last eight months or so, Lord alone, Lord, sometimes with no help uh, at all, Lord. And we thank and praise you, Lord, that your hand of protection has been on him, Lord. We as a church, Lord, have enjoyed virtually meeting together in fellowship, Lord. Uh, each of us have had a different experience, Lord, some good, some bad, Lord. For some of us, it's been a renewal, a rejuvenation, Lord, a revival. For some people, they have lost, Lord. They have lost dear loved ones. They have lost things, Lord. Some people have lost faith, Lord. Some people have lost connections, Lord. Some people find it difficult, Lord, to uh, cling on to you, Lord. And we know, Lord, that uh, as a church, Lord, we would love to come back together, Lord, so that we can all move forward in our quest, Lord, to knowing you more and sharing your word more, Lord. Thank you that during this time, Lord, we've been able to meet and pray as a church, Lord, every evening, Lord, and every Sunday we assemble as a church, like probably virtually, but reminds us of how the old church used to be, Lord. Uh, we thank and praise you, Lord, that we've connected with people from our church and others who are in all parts of India and the world, Lord, some in mission hospitals, some abroad, Lord, uh, some in other different cities, Lord, and we thank and praise you, Lord, that 
you have helped us connect with them and it's so good to see lord that our motto disciple to disciple is alive in these people lord that they are ministering lord that they are praying they are preaching they are singing they're worshiping in different parts of the world lord because as a church lord we were able to disciple them lord thank and praise you lord that uh, this should cause a revival in our own hearts lord uh, as we lord uh, go to a time of sermon and a bible reading we pray lord that uh, your hand of uh, wisdom should continue to be with us and uh, we pray lord that this church service will be a blessing to many lord in your most precious name we pray amen so for today's bible passage uh, dr rabin chako will be preaching from joshua so i will be reading the entire chapter of uh, joshua chapter 5 Uh, it's a fairly long passage but uh, i just hope that you enjoy that it's being done from church and the entire chapter gives you a lot of background into what uh, sir will be preaching about so joshua chapter 5 i'm reading from the new king james version joshua chapter 5 so it was when all the kings of the amorites who were on the west side of the jordan and all the kings of the canaanites who were by the sea heard that the lord had dried up the waters of the jordan from before the children of israel until we had crossed over that their hearts melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of israel at that time the lord said to joshua make flint knives for yourselves and circumcise the sons of israel against again the second time so joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of israel of israel at the hill of the four skins and this is the reason why joshua circumcised them all the people who came out of egypt who were males all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of egypt for all the people who came out had been circumcised but all the people born in the wilderness all the people bo- uh, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of egypt had not been circumcised for the children of israel israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of e- egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the lord to whom the lord swore that he would not show them the land which the lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey then joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way so it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed then the lord said to joshua this day i have rolled away the reproach of egypt from you therefore the name of the place is called gilgal to this day now the children of israel israel camped in gilgal and kept the passover on the 14th day of the month at twilight on the plains of jericho and they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the passover unleavened bread and parched grains on the very same day when the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of israel israel no longer had manna but they ate the food of the land of canaan that year and it came to pass when joshua was by jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand and joshua went to him and said to him are you for us or for our adversaries so he said no but as commander of the army of the lord i have now come and joshua fell on his face to the earth and worship and said to him what does my lord say to this servant and then the commander of the lord's army said to joshua take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy and joshua did so here ends the lesson praise be to god <laughs> 